Hi, I'm Amos Elroy. You may recognize me as uh, what used to be the Progressive Update. I was also a member of the Uphill Media Group, which was a progressive uh, commentary uh, channel on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, and we discussed uh, current events. Um, I am politically pretty much on the progressive side uh, on the liberal aspect, I'm a, what's called a peacenik, a peace movement uh, activist on the Israeli-Palestinian issue, and um, it is hard to, for me to stand on the sidelines and watch what is being said in the media and what is happening. I feel uh, pretty much betrayed by a lot of people who I used to consider comrades uh, in the activist movement uh, because the only thing that I've received was uh, all kinds of like criticism of Israel and no single word of support uh, almost entirely from from my uh, network of uh, friends in the in the progressive uh, field so I feel a little uh, let down to say the least and I wanted to uh, launch this series of programs uh, under my uh, new uh, branding of uh, Roisterous uh, in order to restore some sort of level-headedness and a rational approach uh, examining everything that's being said and uh, disputing a lot of the uh, nonsense that be that's being uh, pushed out there as propaganda uh, as in in attack of, of frankly of both sides but uh, mainly right now uh, against Israel So I want to start with a thought experiment. Uh, you're, uh, you've been elected as, as uh, far as it's difficult for you to imagine. You've been elected as the Israeli Minister of Defense uh, on October 1st. And seven days later, Hamas launches an attack, massacres, uh, 1,400 uh, Israelis that are uh, in uh, settlements around Gaza, uh, people who are mostly in kibbutzim, which are like the, the left-leaning uh, uh, peace movement uh, folk in Israel, and uh, just basically uh, massacres, massive burns babies, slaughters people, cuts their throats, uh, tortures parents in front of their children before executing all of them, uh, throws grenades into uh, crowded uh, shelters with people in it, uh, mows down vehicles, slaughters scores of party goers at a peace rave party and uh, it kidnaps some 240 people, including children, back to Gaza. Now, uh, you've, uh, you've been tasked to respond in, in some way, and now the question is, what are you going to do? You have a few options. You can do nothing and hope that this will not occur again, in spite of the fact that Hamas has pronounced that it, it uh, will do that multiple times again uh, repeatedly in the future. Uh, you can try to negotiate. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you would negotiate uh, with Hamas because Hamas's stance is uh, against the existence, the very existence of Israel. They do not uh, seek a compromise or a, or a statehood next to Israel or whatever. They uh, believe in the entirety of Israel belonging to uh, the Palestinians. And in fact, Mostly their approach is not even related to the Palestinian cause, it's mostly related to Islam and as a sister organization to ISIS or Daesh as we call it or Al-Qaeda, their uh, goals are to conquer uh, lands, uh, turn everybody Muslim and whoever doesn't uh, want to turn Muslim, uh, murder them 
and that is consistently uh, consistently their their approach they're uh, intolerant to LGBTQ they're intolerant to Christians they're intolerant to moderate Arabs and in fact the uh, Arab population in Israel uh, the majority of which 80 percent are uh, deadly afraid of Hamas and what they could uh, do to them as well if you think of uh, Daesh and Al-Qaeda and those uh, groups most of their the vast majority of their victims were actually Muslim so it's not a matter of Israeli versus uh, Muslim it's it's just basically a, an extreme uh, cult of death uh, versus versus more rational human beings and in that I group everybody else including the Palestinian Authority including uh, the ca- countries surrounding uh, the more rational ac- the more rational countries can be negotiated with but the uh, Hamas is basically a uh, uh, dead upon arrival in terms of negotiation. The only thing that could be negotiated is uh, a release of hostages and with that we know that they would require request Israel not just to release the uh, 6,000 uh, prisoners that are held in, in Israeli prisons uh, from Hamas activists and, and uh, operatives but in general uh, do much more uh, that is just the beginning of, of what they would require negotiation was so I don't think uh, negotiation is really much of an uh, option here. Uh, let's think what else we could do. Uh, maybe an aerial attack to deter Hamas maybe if they were deterred enough they wouldn't attack again well again this is a problem this was a tactic attempted in previous rounds uh the israeli government under netanyahu has bombed uh, gaza in the in the previous rounds uh particularly facilities uh, from the Hamas, held by the Hamas and used for for various purposes. Uh, And we've seen that that has not deterred Hamas. In fact, they've launched a much more uh, brutal attack on October 7th. So uh, deterrence has proven not to to be effective uh, for the long term. What else could we do? well, we could do a comprehensive war to uproot Hamas permanently and remove them from this equation. Um, to me, this sounds the most logical out of these possibilities. I don't know of any other possibilities, and if you do have any suggestions, you're welcome to write them uh, at the comments. But uh, I think uprooting Hamas is a requirement for any future chance uh, for uh, uh, negotiation with any side or for uh, any any possible settlement of the Israeli-Palestinian issue. Uh, they have actually been a spoiler from the very beginning, from the beginning that where they staged a coup 16 years ago and uh, uh, killed the uh, the Palestinian Authority people in Gaza and marched them out. From that moment, uh, things have soured, and uh, we've seen that the Israeli uh, political stance has shifted to the right right after that happened. Uh, this was after Israel has left the uh, left Gaza unilaterally, just pulled out and let let it all go to. Th- Palestinians Um, and once they took over, once Hamas took over, they have basically uh, started a campaign of violence So ever since then it's become impossible to negotiate with any side because they're holding the Palestinian Authority hostage they're holding the Palestinians in Gaza hostage enforcing a violent non-compromising approach um, so that's caused Israel to move to the right. It's caused uh, continual violent uh, incidents between Israel and Gaza, which has further uh, polarized both sides. And so perhaps with the removal of Hamas, there is a slight chance 
for this problem to be permanently resolved. Um, so I would, I would consider that the most logical approach. Now, I don't know what you think about it, but uh, to me that seems a no-brainer. Okay, so let's say you decided to uh, go after Hamas. So how would you do that? One option is to just send troops, ground troops, right in. Obviously, you can't get them all from the air. There's nothing you can do in that regard. So you would have to send ground troops. The question is, would you just send them in or do something prior to that? Well, it's known that uh, the uh, urban warfare is the most complicated and uh, deadly uh, warfare because you can be ambushed at every corner. You basically are falling into someone else's trap, especially in this situation where they have miles and miles of underground tunnels. They can pop up from this side or that side and run around and whatever, maneuver around the military. So basically, uh, you don't really have much choice but to prepare the ground for an invasion. And that is what Israel has done, uh, basically attacking uh, not only the rocket launchers, uh, launching rockets live at Israel still, but also attacking their infrastructure, taking up uh, key tactical commanders in the field, uh, also uh, communication hubs for, for the military, uh, and uh, ultimately uh, trying to open corridors uh, for urban fight so that you basically would open uh, one or two arteries uh, flatten uh, a street in one direction so that you you it's harder to ambush uh, when you are there with the artillery and tanks and whatever so this is really not much uh, choice unfortunately uh, doing so would uh, cause a lot of death, especially if there are civilians uh, uh, densely populating the area, and that is a serious issue. How would you avoid civilian casualties, though? Because if your purpose is as a, as a minister of uh, defense to remove Hamas, and this is your goal, and your stated goal, and the secondary goal, or the first goal is to uh, save the hostages in some way, how do you prevent uh, collateral damage or civilian casualties? Uh, clearly, it's not in your interest to uh, cause them, even if you were a monster and you had absolutely no regards for human life or, or uh, humanity, uh, clearly uh, going after civilians would be a complete waste of your uh, efforts because they would cause an international outcry, which we are seeing anyway. And uh, it, would, uh, it would cause a, a pressure on you to stop before you achieve your tactical or strategic goal of removing Hamas. But how do you do that? What, what would you do? And, and I'm curious to, to read what your comments will say. But uh, one of the things I'm, I'm thinking of would be send warnings to civilians to evacuate to a safer zone. Um, so basically uh, tell them where it is safer to be uh, and how to avoid the main areas of battle. Uh, provide, the second thing would be provide safe movement corridors so that they can actually evacuate in those corridors and tell them what, where those are. Uh, further, I would try to open uh, a humanitarian aid uh, a flow and uh, provide uh, goods uh, and, and food and water and so forth. Uh, also, I would try to allow a field hospital uh, to be set up uh, so that people who are evacuated from other hospitals that are closer to uh, war zones uh, could get uh, medical help. Uh, I would also allow uh, them to uh, seek medical help, the, the, the ones who are sicker or uh, have uh, uh, injuries uh, should be able to uh, be evacuated to 
uh, regional hospitals in, in uh, adjacent countries. Now, while you're doing it, and these are all things that Israel has in fact done, they've uh, thrown leaflets, they've broadcast, they've said, sent uh, messages online warning everybody to leave the area and uh, there is uh, basically an evacuation route that was designed for it and on the on the large scale most people have left uh, so out of 1.1 million people who are north of the line that was designated uh, there uh, about 300,000 that are still there for whatever reason. Uh, they decided not to move. Maybe they're uh, uh, families of Hamas. Maybe their uh, livelihood is, is uh, directly connected to Hamas and, and their supply lines or whatever. So you, you might be uh, staying in this area. However, that's, that's kind of a risky thing to do. But in addition to that... It turned out that Hamas decided that it needed people around it to stay. So, uh, in some areas they have blocked and uh, stopped people from leaving and forced them to live uh, uh, on top, on basically above ground in the areas of hostilities. Uh, they, of course, have tunnels that they're sheltering under. Uh, the people, uh, the civilians, unfortunately, are not so lucky. They have to uh, be in dwellings above ground. And so their likelihood of getting, uh, getting hurt are, is much higher. Uh, so what do you do? So uh, how about freeing blockages by Hamas and that's another thing that Israel has done and tried to remove those blockade blockades uh, and they've actually come under attack trying to do that uh, while they were trying to open blockages anyway so I hear a lot of noises about uh, uh, genocide and, and ethnic cleansing and stuff like that and and it's heartbreaking to see uh, civilians being hurt. It's heartbreaking to see children who, who've never done anything to anyone, have, have no skin in the game, get hurt. Or women, or anyone who's, who's, who hasn't been involved in that or is not supporting Hamas. Uh, and they get, they get uh, messed up in this in spite of all of the, these precautions that were set. But it's hard to say that Israel is a genocidal state because a genocidal state doesn't do those things to protect civilians. And they, if, if really they wanted to attack civilians, the casualties would have not been what they're now. They would have been much, much higher considering the, uh, the military uh, power that, that Israel uh, uh, can use. So I find those those uh, accusations in disingenuous and and not helpful in any way. It's uh, it's throwing uh, oil on the fire. It's maligning a country that's basically trying to fight for its, its survival because it cannot see itself existing with uh, threats like Hamas and Hezbollah in the north, just surrounding it, just waiting for any opportunity to murder brutally any of its citizens. It's not sustainable. So something, Israel understand that it has to do something. And the question is, have they done enough to protect civilians? And that is a question that is going to be explored by, no, no doubt, it will have to be explored uh, by by human rights organizations and so, so forth. But my sense is that they are, and, and uh, they they have shown what they have done so far to to, uh, and they've proven that that, that they have um, issued warnings, let humanitarian aid through, do all of that while hostages, live hostages, are being held. And in spite of the fact that, that they are not releasing even information about them, they're not 
letting anyone out. They're just holding hostages. But Israel is still expected to provide all of these uh, humanitarian aids and stuff. And they're doing that. But uh, it, it's kind of disheartening that in, in spite of all of these efforts, there are people out there who are... Uh, uh, intent on uh, characterizing Israel as a as a criminal uh, actor and a genocidal state and that is simply not the case I'm uh, going to address any of the comments that you have down there uh, further in order to uh, continue with this discussion bye till next time